Do you have a 2003 to a 2006 Cadillac Escalade? Well, I just picked up a 2004 Cadillac Escalade ESV. Now, if you're new to my channel, welcome back. But if you're new, well, welcome. You'll definitely want to subscribe to my channel because I'll show you how to save tons of money doing your own repairs on your Cadillac Escalade. But before we get started, please don't forget to like and subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell. Believe it or not, this really helps me to continue making these repair videos. So we're looking at the driver's side and seeing what we have to do. I can see this number one cylinder is going to be an issue. There's a lot of stuff around it. Let's take a look at the passenger side. Well, it looks a little more open in this area. Seems like it's a little easier. Except for that one back there. Okay, let's see what we're going to need as far as tools. One of the hardest things to do in doing a tune-up is pulling out the spark plug wire boot. They get stuck on the spark plugs and 90% of the time it's really hard to pull off the spark plug and sometimes you bust your knuckles. So I'm going to try this tool. They're called heavy duty spark plug wire pliers. You'll see how I use this tool here in a moment. All right, let's get to work. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take off these three covers. There's one on the driver's side, one on the passenger side and one over on the center. It's held down by eight millimeter screws. So you're gonna need an eight millimeter socket and a ratchet. Remove all three covers and set aside. Now that we got the cover off, I like to work on the hardest side first, and that's the driver's side. As you can see where the yellow arrows are at, that's where the coil pack is at. It's a square coil pack is what I have. By the way, you can disconnect all the plug wires if you want, just so you have better clearance, and they're not in the way as you're removing the spark plugs because they're all the same size. I repeat, they're all the same size. There's no way you're gonna get this mixed up. If you look at the lower left of the video there, there's a red arrow. That's pointed to your number one cylinder. This is one of the hard ones. There's two of them. You can get your hand in there, but if you have a hand like Andre the Giant, when you're done, your hand's gonna probably look like hamburger. There's a temp sensor in the way, so you're gonna have to unplug it so you have access to pull the boot to remove the spark plug. If you look at the rest of the red arrows, you can see the other locations of the other spark plugs. Here's a diagram of the engine firing order. If you see the red arrow, that's the first spark plug we're going to pull off here. Okay, you can see here, I've removed the boot from the spark plug and I have a short socket and a short extension with a ratchet installed, ready to remove the spark plug. Once you have it loose, go ahead and remove the ratchet by your hand. You can remove it with your hand. Follow the same procedure for the next three spark plugs. These spark plugs look fairly clean even though they're old, which makes me believe that I do have a fuel pump problem. Doesn't look like it's burning oil, plus it looks pretty clean. Well, this is my feeler gauge. Please don't judge me. There's different types of feeler gauges out there. This one's been working for me pretty good. I believe I got this one at AutoZone. When you buy spark plugs now, they say that the gap is set, but I found they're never set. I always double check my spark plugs to make sure that the gap setting is correct. In this engine, it calls out for a gap of 40 thousandths. You can see how far off they are. 
all you have to do is lightly tap it to close the gap and then just put it on the feeler gauge to double check to make sure it's correct. One of the things I like to use before installing my spark plug is some anti-seize lubricant. All you gotta do is just take a brush and just brush it on the threads only. Don't get any on the electrode. For demonstration purposes only, I'm applying it on an old spark plug to show you how to apply it on. Now we're ready to screw in the spark plug. I like using this long 5.8 socket. It's got a rubber boot inside to hold the spark plug. Plus it's long so it helps you hold the spark plug in place in the socket as you thread the spark plug in there. It's a lot easier to handle because it's long. Once you've threaded the spark plug in, you can go ahead and tighten it up or if need be remove it and use a shorter socket with an adapter if need be to insert your ratchet in so you can tighten it up. As you're screwing the spark plug in, be careful and not cross thread the spark plug into the cylinder head. If you cross thread it, you're going to make more work for yourself. You're going to have to tap it out. So just be careful. When you're tightening the spark plug, tighten it until it's snug. Don't over tighten it. Okay, now we're in the back of the engine here on the passenger side, the number eight cylinder. This is the second hardest one. Again, if you have an average size hand, your hand can get back in there. I know it's a little tough, but if I can do it, you certainly can do it. Just follow the same procedure. Now we're gonna remove the spark plug on the number one cylinder. And there's some couple of things you need to know. First of all, there's a lot of stuff around it, but you can still get in there. As you can see in this picture here, you can see the number one cylinder. The yellow arrow is pointed to the spark plug on the number one cylinder. The red arrow is showing you a engine temp sensor. You're gonna to have to unplug this wire, and I'll show you here in a second. Okay, what I'm trying to do here is to give you a close up of what you're having to deal with. From the right side, my hand is coming in. You can see me wiggling the wire there. Okay, here's a close-up of that engine temp sensor. The white arrows are showing you the sensor and the plug. They're both in red. You can see it unplugged. The red arrow is the clip that's on the plug that you have to loosen to remove the plug. You can see it's broken. But when I plug it in, it's pretty snug, so I think I'm okay. Just unplug it, just get it and move it out of the way so you have some room to unscrew the spark plug. Okay, to help you visualize to see what's going on here, the green line is the socket. The socket is already in there and it's the direction of how this spark plug goes in. The red is the ratchet. You'll see it here, everything moving all at once. Again, I just wanted to give you a visual what's going on here. Okay, now that we got all the spark plugs in, now we're gonna prep our spark plug wires. Like I told you, they're all the same size, so there's no way you can make a mistake putting the wrong wire in or the wrong sequence. One of the first things we're gonna do to prep this is you're gonna need a brush and some dielectric grease. I'm starting to see companies adding this into their package so you can use some, so you don't have to buy any. But I got a little bit of extra anyway. This only cost me a buck. What you're gonna do is take a little bit, put it on the brush, and then brush it inside your spark plug wires on the inside. What this does is prevent your boot from getting stuck into the spark plug or your coil. So the next time if you ever have to take it out, it's really easy to take out. So just brush it in really good. You can't have too much of this stuff on there. A large tube will run you about six to eight bucks, but I don't need much and I think I'll be okay. Once you've got them all lubricated up on both ends, go ahead and install them into your spark plug and into your coil. It's that easy. We're on the home stretch now. Okay, now it's time to plug in the spark plug wires. 
Usually I start out with the spark plugs first. Once I've got that side in, then I plug it into the coil. It's that simple. Make sure when you put it in, it snaps in place. You'll feel it snap in. Besides the number one being a hard one to do, I wanted to show you the number eight cylinder to show you that it can be done. Well, looks like we got everything in. I think we're all done. Let's fire it up.